We are now taking a look at the Class 5 slalom course. A little bit different from the Class 4, just in terms of the chair experience of the competitors. The Class 4 competitors are usually completely or mostly dependent on their wheelchairs and therefore have a little bit more wheelchair experience. Therefore, the course of the Class 4 is designed to be a little bit more difficult simply because the competitors have more chair experience. Class 5s, however, people who are designated as Class 5 have less chair experience because they're not totally dependent on their wheelchairs. Some of them can actually get up and use canes to get around so they don't need to use a chair every moment of every day. And therefore the class five course is designed a little bit easier in that respect. Gentlemen, we're looking at right now is David Ferris. He may making his attempt through the slalom course, class five open. Still going over that rough terrain. That's proven to give most people the most trouble during these slalom events. Now up and over the big divide right there. Most of the same obstacles that you might see in the class four, some of them are a little bit different. They're also in a little bit different order. Looks like he knocked over a cone. That's probably going to be a one second penalty. Come on, Ron. David Ferris, class five open slalom course as he continues his run. He's got to make sure to push that thing all the way through those orange parking cones and it looks like he's got it part of the course where now he has to go frontwards and backwards showcasing the ability to switch directions at ease and again, this course is designed to mimic a lot of the everyday obstacles that some of these competitors will face. Again, we're looking at David Ferris, his run through the Class 5 Open course. Now he heads towards the big ramp that will go up and then teeter down the other side towards a set of stairs that he has to go down. Oh, and he falls forward. There are always three spotters around the competitors at all times to make sure that if they need to be caught, if they start to fall down, they're there to catch him. Again, in that instance, as he has a little bit of trouble with the mattress. If the spotters have to catch or touch the competitor in any way to keep them from falling over or to help push them through a particular obstacle, it counts as a five second penalty, although that's also up to official judgment. If they decide that they ended up catching a competitor who probably could have caught themselves if they were left alone, they might decide to not count that as a penalty. He's got to push himself hard now. He's got to get through the big up and over part of it, and he's got it. A huge part of this slalom course is designed to test the willpower and skill of a lot of these competitors. Think of it a lot like the Ironman competition. There's so much skill, so much dedication you have to put into it, and really it's not about whatever time you end up finishing with, it's about finishing the course. Now he's got to back his way up and over that ramp. It's got to require a lot of strength to be able to get yourself up and over. He's got his front wheels a little bit off the side of it. And he's going to turn around, give it another go. So he's got to back himself up and over. He's turning his head over to the right, trying to look, make sure he knows where he's going. He's also got to get enough momentum to push himself up and over. Had Cohen managed to stay up, I don't think they're going to count that as a penalty. Nope, they knocked it over. Looks like they will. So David Ferris looking to get a little bit of momentum to carry himself up and over.
Not only does he have to find that momentum, he's also got to make sure he's got enough to discount the fact that his wheels are slipping a little bit as he's trying to back himself up and over. He's got a little bit more that time. But that gravity's bringing him back down the other side. He's almost near the top. Can he make it? He's got it. One more to go. He is determined. David Ferris up and over the second ramp. This time gets to go forward. Makes things a little bit easier. That's the great thing about these slalom events. They really test the competitor's determination. There are so many difficult obstacles coming one after the other that you have to constantly push yourself in order to make sure that you finish it. You have to push yourself just to keep going and not quit. When you get those obstacles coming at you one after the other, it's very tempting to just say, all right, I'm done, this is way too much for me. But we haven't seen that from any one of these competitors. It's a testament to the heart and willpower that they've been displaying so far in this slalom event. And Ferris is up and over the steps. He's got to spin himself around, 360. Backing himself up, spinning around. He's getting closer and closer to the opening and closing doors portion of the course. You have to open and close these things very, very carefully. In the past, competitors were just flying through those doors ripping them open and then slamming them shut and a lot of times the doors were breaking, falling off the hinges. Earlier today we were speaking with Abby LaCroix, the course designer for this year's slalom course, and she said that a new feature are those cones on top of the doors. About four cones on top of the door frames designed to force the competitor to very carefully open and shut them. It's a five second penalty for each one of those cones that falls off. So you have to be very, very careful. And of course, another thing that makes it difficult is that both doors open to the inside. So you have to open one, back up, open the other, then go through and try to shut both of them. Looks like one of the cones fell down there for Ferris. That's going to be a five second penalty. So Ferris is through the two doors. He's got to turn around now and shut them. <laughs> Looks like he's got one trying to pull the other one shut. Those cones are teetering on top, but they're staying upright. Oh, and there goes one of the yellow ones and the other. That's 10 more seconds added on to his time. After another very, very difficult portion of the class five course that we don't see in the class four. This area with sand and rocks and gravel. It's a very, very difficult thing to try to get through, especially if you have thin wheels or slippery wheels. Again, we don't see this in the class four course, only here in the class five. But Ferris has made it all the way through. A lot of sand and rocks and gravel, but he's got it through. Now he's got the metal rungs. The trick is to keep those front wheels up so they don't get caught in between those rungs each time. There's just enough space so the wheels can turn sideways and get caught. You gotta be able to pop a wheelie, get those front wheels up and over. The crowd's cheering him on. David Ferris almost through, and he's got it. Looks like he's got to turn around one more time and go through backwards. Made it through, just a couple more. He's gonna speed his way through the finish line. David Ferris finishes off the class five open course. 
and looked very determined doing it. A lot of heavy obstacles, showed a lot of willpower on some of those things and made sure to finish all the way to the end. David Ferris, ladies and gentlemen.